Am I the jerk for telling the mother of my fiancé's child that she's not entitled to my respect? I am a 25-year-old female engaged to my fiancé, a 23-year-old male who has a young daughter from his previous relationship. Over the course of the time that we've been together, it has been constant drama with his ex-girlfriend, a 25-year-old female. She was unhappy that he moved on, created a big social media fiasco, and stopped him from seeing his daughter frequently. Sometimes he would not see his daughter for months. My fiancé was done reasoning with her and was seeking the help of a group of lawyers when his ex-girlfriend messaged me to apologize. She said she wanted him to see their daughter and did not want there to be any bad blood between me and her. We both accepted the apology for the sake of him being able to see his daughter. She agreed that he could see his daughter under the condition that I would essentially be his middleman for them. He told her to forget it and that he'd just go through the legal route as it was unfair for me. I was uncomfortable, but I also believed that him seeing his daughter was more important and put my feelings aside. This was my first mistake. His ex-girlfriend eventually began contacting my fiancé directly. Weirdly, she also began to contact me more frequently, oftentimes referring to me as a friend and confiding in me about her new partner. I would just sit and quietly listen, as I was uncomfortable but did not want to cause problems. One day, she abruptly asked if I plan on having kids with my fiancé, and if so, when? I awkwardly replied, eventually, yes. She then proceeded to tell me that I am not allowed to have kids with him, as he is not a good father to the daughter he already has. This appalled me as my fiancé is an incredible father, and quite frankly, I believe that she has no business dictating what I do with my reproductive system. I lost my cool and told her to butt out and mind her own business. She said that I need to respect her as the mother of my fiancé's daughter. I said she is not entitled to my respect just because she has a kid. She hung up and told my fiancé that he is not welcome to see his daughter again as we have no respect for a hair as a mother. My fiancé is devastated but has said the blame lies completely with her and that I was right. Some of my friends, especially those with children themselves, think I should have been respectful as she is the mother of his child. I'm not a parent, but I don't think choosing to have a child means you're entitled to respect when you've previously behaved so poorly. I am also aware however that I am going to have to deal with this woman for the rest of my life. You are not the problem. This woman is going to weaponize visitation of this child until a custody order is approved by the courts. Your fiancé needs to follow through with an attorney because the legal route is really the only option here. She only apologized after he went to lawyers and realized she could be in big trouble for using the child as a pawn. Am I the jerk for making my friend cry? My friend and I were having a heated discussion about a controversial topic. I was passionate about my viewpoint and started to raise my voice. My friend became emotional and eventually started crying. I feel bad that my words had such a strong impact on them, but I believe it's important to stand up for what I believe in. Am I the asshole for making my friend cry in this situation? For background, this was at a summer camp that I, a 16-year-old female, have been going to since I was 10. Every year we make new friends. This year, as per usual, I went to the camp and met Nikki Kite. Each camp session only lasts about 8 days, and this happened on day 5. We were just having fun, chatting with some friends, when Nikki, who had told me she didn't have a boyfriend, announced that she missed her man. I knew she didn't have one, but we were in front of people and I didn't want to embarrass her, so I didn't call her out on this. She started talking about her boyfriend named Francolini or something like that. It was something crazy, and it wasn't just Frank. My friends and I laughed and started making fun of his name, which she laughed about too. She started explaining that he lives in Italy. Some girls questioned, so how did you meet him? Then Nikki went on about how his whole family lives in Italy, his grandma has a farm there, he visits every summer, they met at school, etc. Jokingly I teased, ooh, so you're into white boys, but then she said, Italian isn't white, which confused me because I'm pretty sure Italy is in Europe, which would make them white. This turned into a whole fight. Nikki and I argued with other girls getting involved and yelling, let her talk. And, no, you shut up. Nikki screamed, he's mixed. I was fine with that and I didn't really care what race he was. I was just a little confused when she got so mad because I joked she was into white boys and that Italians are white. Anyway, she got very mad because I started laughing. Nikki said, no, because my name, I know you're mad and just trying to cover it up with laughing. You're being so disrespectful making fun of my boyfriend. Then she got up and left. I found out later she started crying. All the counselors and kids except a few got mad at me and I was asked to apologize, which I didn't. One of my friends even got so mad they didn't sit next to me at lunch anymore. Maybe I was a little mean, but I thought it was all jokes. Also, there's nothing wrong with liking white boys. Anyway, am I the asshole? Should I apologize? Y'all had a full-blown argument about whether Italians are white or not. This was sparked because Nikki was talking about her alleged boyfriend. You embarrassed her when she was trying to show off, and that just made it worse. Apologize for screaming at her and control yourself in the future. Am I the jerk for breaking my grandma's phone? I got my grandmother a smartphone to get her up to date with the times and showed her she can watch movies and TV shows. I set her up a Facebook account so she can get in touch with her old friends, including family. 
she agreed and was happy to be able to contact everyone. After a week of teaching her about Facebook, internet safety, how to watch her shows, and how to use Google, everything went south. Her phone started malfunctioning after a while and she gave it to me to fix. I noticed that she was on Facebook talking to scammers. I told her what was happening. There were scam text messages asking for money and calling her. She would go to a store and spend $100 every week to send to these scammers. I explained to her why she shouldn't do that, how dangerous it can be, and that they were using her. She didn't care. I went to these stores to inform them that she was buying these gift cards for scammers and showed them screenshots. I deleted all of the messages from the scammers and blocked hundreds of them, which took a lot of time. I became worried later. She was at it again, believing that this was the guy and to prove it to me, she wanted me to talk to the man. She called him. He asked her if she went to Walmart and got his card, saying he was starving and wanted to come see her. I told him to never contact her again and blocked him on Messenger. I took her to Sam's Club to put groceries in her house because of these scammers. I reached out to family to let them know to talk. My aunt told me that it was out of my control, that she was a grown woman and there was nothing I could do. She said to let her be happy and that I was interfering with her life. I told my aunt that it's absurd that she would let her mother get scammed and do nothing about it. I got up and went home. I took it into my own hands, taking control over her Gmail and Facebook. After all, I made it and set it up for her. Time went by and everything was well, until I received a friend request from her from a new profile. I called her and asked why she made a new one. She said my uncle made it for her and has control over it so I cannot touch it and keep her from her love. I hung up and called him, asking why he thought that was a good idea. He ignored me and blocked me. She babysits for my mother, watching my three little sisters to make a little extra money since she can't support herself sending money to this scammer too. He even had her install this weird app that gives him control over her phone. She would call me to ask me to fix her phone. When I told her it was the app, she would shrug it off. She was babysitting my sisters. I had to take her back home yesterday because my stepdad had a tree fall on him, so my mother had to take him to the hospital. I received a phone call from her telling me that grandma has been telling my little sisters to talk to this guy and to send pictures of them to him. My grandmother still thinks this is okay. There are no jerks here OP, but this situation is incredibly tough. The best course of action might be to let her power of attorney handle things, as financial supervision could really help here. It's painful to see her get scammed, but with your aunt and uncle enabling it, there's not much you can do except step back. Ensuring she has responsible family members watching her finances could make a big difference. Am I the jerk for offering to chip in for my partner's gift for me? I, a 24-year-old man, have been dating my girlfriend, a 23-year-old woman, for four years. This year, a few days before my birthday, my girlfriend and I were discussing what we were going to be doing to celebrate. The conversation went as normal as you'd expect, before somehow ending up on what she planned to get me as a gift. We're not that fussy about surprises after so long of dating, and we now usually discuss gifts for each other so that we get things the other truly wants or needs. Something she started, lately, I've been pushing myself to be more active to get in better shape which she has been truly supportive of. She told me that she was planning to get me an Apple Watch so I could better track my fitness. I was very excited and wholeheartedly said that I would really appreciate it. We started looking online at the different watches. This was where the problem started. My girlfriend is currently working part-time alongside her university course, so she usually only has enough for her rent, bills, and food expenses. She has around $600 to $700 a month for leisurely spending. Because of this, she was looking at some of the older models online, which honestly was perfectly fine. However, I then said, hey, how about I chip in a bit and then we could get the latest Series 9 model. It has some cool features that the older ones don't. After that, she stopped scrolling and fell silent for a minute or two. After I asked if she was okay, she started getting a little defensive and more and more upset before blowing up. She said that my offer to chip in for my own birthday gift made it seem that her own budget and spending capabilities were not enough for me and that I was being selfish. Naturally, I was shocked and didn't know how to respond. After being shouted at like that, I felt the instinct to defend myself and felt like shouting back. But knowing how that would go, I just remained silent for a while to get my thoughts in order and calm down. Apparently my silence was confirmation of her accusation, so she cried even harder before asking me to leave. I apologized and said that it wasn't the case of her spending not being enough for me. In the end, I still left so that she could calm down. Now I'm super confused because I don't really understand where this all came from. Am I the asshole? You did the right thing. It's your birthday, and she's seeking your input on the whole process. It's understandable to offer to pay the difference to get the model you want. If she's getting defensive about it, that's insecurity on her part. She should care more about getting a gift you actually like rather than focusing on her role in giving it. 
Am I the jerk for not babysitting someone at a party? This happened last semester, but I still hear about it from time to time. My friends seem to be divided. Some of them think I am a jerk for this, and some of them say I am not. I wanted to see what you think. I am in college, and last fall I met a girl, let's call her Samantha, not her real name. I kind of had a crush on her, but it wasn't until the spring semester that we started hanging out at all. I will admit I was kind of pathetic, tagging along with her but whatever. I never claimed to be cool, I finally get invited to a party she's going to. I think, cool, maybe I can be smooth and hit her up while we're there. I offer to drive, but she tells me she'll meet me there. I show up and hang out for a bit. It takes me a few minutes to find her and we chat for a few minutes. Then she disappears, like she's gone. We're at someone's house I don't know, and there are a ton of people there. I have no clue what happened to this girl. Eventually I wind up in a spare bedroom where some people were watching one of the Fast and Furious movies. I can't remember which one, maybe number 4. I sit down on the couch and watch the movie. I don't know anyone else, I can't find Samantha, but I have a beer in a movie so whatever I'll enjoy myself. After a while she finally reappears, and she's basically supporting this other girl I don't know. When she sees me, she gets all excited and I think that's great news. She just dumps the girl next to me and tells me, she's in a k-hole, you gotta watch her. At the time, I didn't know what that meant. I still only kind of know. I figure the girl was drunk or something so I say, hey, wanna sit down and watch the movie with me? Samantha says, yeah, I'll be right back and bounces. Eventually the movie is over and she has never come back, so I get up and go look for her. Again, I can't find her. I have no idea where this chick went. I spend like 15 minutes looking for her, and nobody can tell me where she is. By this time it's late and I'm cranky, so I leave. A couple of days later, I get an angry text from Samantha saying that some guy touched her friend and that I was supposed to have been watching her. I told her that wasn't my job, but she just said it doesn't matter. Her friend was a woman and unable to protect herself, and as a man, I should have watched over her and now she's been violated. I was still pissed about being ditched, so I stopped replying pretty quickly. The one good thing about this is that I am over my crush. Haha. <laughs> Some of my friends think I should have watched the girl because she was in a dangerous place. There were a lot of people taking pills there, which I'm not into, which also made me further uncomfortable. Some of my friends say it was Samantha's responsibility. I don't know. You are not at fault here. Samantha's friend, Samantha's responsibility. Just because Samantha was acquaintances with you does not mean that you were actually trustworthy and does not give her a free pass to dump her friend on you and ditch you. She failed her friend and that's on her. What the hell Sam? Am I the jerk for not going to my friend's potluck after they neglected my birthday? I'm a 41 year old male and one of 7 expatriate teachers who moved to Europe a year ago and quickly became close friends. Once people's birthdays started, we began doing more and more, until by April it was a 4 day party with people vying for the honor of hosting. I was always one of the ones pushing to do more, spend a little more, host with better food and drinks, and leave more personal birthday wishes. One other teacher and I have the same summer birthday. We knew we wouldn't get the royal treatment, but we assumed someone would spearhead a pre- or post-summer party for us. We didn't think about it much but I do care, and I'm torn whether I'm keeping score unfairly. Some of us stayed in Europe this summer and some flew back to the United States. I stayed. Besides a few messages like hey, aren't your birthdays this week? There wasn't much fanfare. The one person who didn't say anything besides hearting other messages and sending a mass text saying, I love you all so much, and yes, I am very stoned right now, is a woman. We'll call her Sue. Sue's partner has done a lot of handyman work for me, and I always overpay, because they don't have much money on one income, and because Sue's partner does excellent work. I've paid Sue's partner approximately 5,000 euros to get my apartment set up. When Sue went back to the United States, I asked her to buy me some hot sauce I can't get in Europe. Her partner bought four different kinds, but Sue made him take two of them back because she was worried about her cash flow. When they gave me the hot sauce, I sent them more than enough money to pay for all four, as a gesture of thanks. Sue and her partner are back in Europe, and Sue has said yes to three social events before backing out at the last minute. Sue sent a message to the group yesterday that she's on a new birth control, and it is really messing with her emotions, which explains her recent behavior, and she asked for patience. One person responded, but I haven't yet. Sue then invited us to her house tonight for a potluck, joking that she can't back out of this one if she's hosting. The last time she hosted, she asked people to leave at around 9 because she was getting tired. She says she wants to see the gang one last time before they go to Paris for the Olympics for a week. Sue's apartment usually smells like pet urine, the sofa has pet hair all over it, and Sue makes her partner do all the hosting duties while she sits there. Please tell me, I need honest advice. Am I the asshole if I don't go to my friend Sue's gathering even though she's having a hard time, in part due to birth control hormone difficulties, which I, as a man, can't really fathom? Should I go? Attendance at any potluck or birthday party should never be considered mandatory. Everyone has a different level of enthusiasm for social events, and they quickly stop being fun when they're loaded with social pressure and expectations. People may enjoy your gregariousness at first, but they'll quickly grow tired of being pushed to spend more money and effort on hosting obligatory parties. Just politely decline if you don't want to go, 
no need to make it a bigger issue. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.